Recorder. Hello and welcome to another edition of Stage Your Insights. Today I have two guests with me, two of my very best friends, Linnell Hartman from Minneapolis and Jan Resch Saunders from Phoenix today, right? Yeah, yep. Phoenix yep. and Seattle. So welcome, ladies. Thank and you. one of the reasons we're having our conversation today is to tell you a little bit more about our certification program for color. And we are transitioning from one trainer to another trainer. And we're gonna tell you the scoop on why that is happening. So first, let me talk to Jan Resch and she's gonna tell us her color story. Okay, well, I've always loved color since I was a little girl. And I remember my, my mom and all of her friends commenting when I was really little, like four years old, about red being my best color, you know, when I was dressing up in those corduroy overalls. And for some funny reason, I just have always loved red. I don't know if it's because of that or just that I've loved red. And um, so went through school, learned all of the stuff you do in art class with watercolors and not really understanding a, a lot about color. But, you know, going through my career, I started off at a uh, white sewing machine company and then ended up writing several uh, sewing books. And one of the things that I discovered early on in this is if I had a color section in the middle of the book, it was really, really important that no matter where the projects that I developed and designed ended up in that center fold, basically, that the colors all work together. So what I figured out was if I work primarily with primary and secondary colors, and if they were in their highest saturation, just think cartoons or comic books or any of that kind of uh, color that no matter where they ended up in the in the, that center piece, um, the colors would work. Um, then move on, you know, one thing led to led to another and I studied a little bit of color. Uh, be, well, I didn't study it. I was draped with the colors that worked well with my complexion and hair color then. Uh, and it ended up that uh, I discovered that there were certain colors that looked better. And no matter if I switched them out one to the other, they all looked great together. And I thought, wow, this is the coolest thing. And then moving along, uh, wrote Sewing for Dummies. And um, the publishers of uh, of Sewing for Dummies said, you know what, we really need to have a lot more emphasis on home decorating for second edition. And I went, oh good, that's what I like to do anyway. So I began to do a little more study. And then again, using that same principle, but I still was a little stymied. And what I noticed then though, was as I was putting fabrics together, I would look at them and all of a sudden discover, oh my gosh, this one seems to clash with this. And I wasn't sure why. So moving along, we've been transferred a bunch of times. Our son grew up, you know, we ended up in, uh, in New England of the United States and in, in uh, in, well, in Connecticut and Massachusetts. Um, and we ended up starting to rehab this house, which Ted and I are really big do-it-yourselfers anyway. So ended up in the Sherwin-Williams store about two or three times a week. And finally the store manager said, well, well, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a professional, I'm a certified staging professional. And and you know, blah, 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 and I've written books. And he goes, thinks to himself, oh my gosh, you must know something about color. Little did he know that I was, I had no clue other than mixing those paints when I was in elementary school. So I ended up uh, working for Sherwin Williams for about five years and was the uh, store decorator. 
And the way that I launched this service was I did a color uh, or a PowerPoint presentation on color. And as I was sitting there and I, you know, had the PowerPoint behind me with the color wheel on there and I'm looking at the store in that, in that particular time, I'm looking at that whole color part of the store where all the swatches were. And all of a sudden it was like light bulb moment. The color um, principles that I was teaching to those interested homeowners were arranged the identical way that they were on the Sherwin-Williams wall. And uh, it was just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so cool. But then after that, I ended up getting all of these consultations and I was booked out for probably three weeks for the five years I was there. Um, and I just kept developing a better system of figuring out those colors more quickly to the point where Christine and I were talking and I was saying, hey, I've been doing these color consultations and selling a lot of paint and gosh, there might be some stagers that would be interested in this. And of course, Christine being our brilliant leader said, oh good, you wanna do a course. <laughs> So um, put the course together and I've been teaching it for, I, I think, like 12 years or something like that. And, you know, as time has gone on, it certainly has evolved into, I think, a very usable machine, um, a system, a process that if a stager uses it for either selling space or if they're doing redesign in dwelling in that space they have the answers in the process no matter if you're if you're helping clients with you know a mobile home up to a multi-million dollar McMansion or if they're doing a dentist office doctor's office to a um, let's say a, a workout or or health center because I've done all of that and no matter what it is I walk into I may go ooh I'm not sure how this is going to work and then I work the process and everyone is thrilled so that's kind of my story um and of course and you're very humble in the way that you've presented that so <laughs> let's go back to how many books have you written 17. 17 books, yes. Yeah. So that's, first of all, she's a well-accomplished uh, woman in terms of, and an author. But, um, you know, you've been involved in fashion and uh, decorating and redesign in your own business development, you know, when you were doing right. those services. So it sounds yeah. like you just stumbled across this, but, you know, it's a process. And when you said light bulb yeah. moment, I'm like, well, what is that light bulb moment? Because if I don't know anything about color, Talk me through that part. What was the light bulb? You know, the just that everything's. Yeah, the light bulb moment was there are four different versions of color. I mean, you imagine the rainbow. And those colors are beautiful, but you can't put them in every application because they're just too saturated. They're too bright. So throughout, um, well, since since the 1600s, when Sir Isaac Newton developed this and, and discovered the visible light spectrum and, and put everything he knew on a wheel, all of the sudden that rainbow was discovered to be, oh my gosh, if I add a little bit of white to it, it, it makes that color pastel. If I, if I mix it again with we're speaking pigment here. Um, if I mix it with a little gray, I can neutralize that. So it's a perfect background for a sofa <laughs> or to be put in front of it. If I add a little black to it, oh my gosh, that still maintains a lot of color, but it, um, it, believe it or not, warms that color, warms it up so that it works with the flooring and the carpeting and the, and the, you know, all of the natural finishes and furnishings that we have in our homes. Yeah. So 
that to me was a huge light bulb moment. And then when I realized, oh my gosh, if I put a cool undertone with a warm undertone, which is very well covered in the course, everything clashes. And so most people who love this space of interior design or color or just the HGTV watchers probably look at something and will go, ugh, this isn't working, but they don't know why. And it's because the science isn't working it out. The science is not um, confirming that this is working together. So that to me was the biggest light bulb moment is, oh my gosh, now I know why these don't work together. And that's what you know, the, the, the color certification course really it's teach them how to not make mistakes ever it, again, ever and, again, right. and understand the why things are working yes. the way they are. Right. And that's mm -hmm. coming after about a thousand consultations and you're oh, bringing yeah. that whole experience into that workshop. Right. Yeah. So let's yeah. bring Linnell into the conversation now. And Linnell and Jan, Jan uh, and I have been in decorating and staging for I don't know. When did I meet you? 2001? Yes. Ish, 2001. Yeah, 2001. Yeah. 2001. We were all oh. palling around. <clears throat> so tell us your color journey, Linnell. Well, I have some similarities to Jan. You know, growing up, I always loved color and playing with things. And my mom was painting furniture or stripping back furniture. And she let me paint and she let me do things. So I did love color and playing with it, just like Jan did as a child. And then um, I worked with troubled youth for a time. And after that, I decided I really liked houses and I liked people. So I should go into real estate, which is what everybody thinks when they want to go into real estate. Yep. And I ended up working in corporate relocation, which really was an amazing opportunity because at any one time um, I had 80 houses in my portfolio on average throughout the year and when that relocation or that happened and now that house was sitting vacant my job was to tell the corporation guess what you know what we really need to paint and it needs new carpet because buyers want that so at that point in time, I was playing around with real estate beige, as we called it, you know, neutralizing everything, making it just a blank palette. And some of their homes were higher end, beautifully done that went with their furnishings. But when their furnishings were gone, if you didn't have that color palette, it didn't stand out or work for you. So I didn't know what I was doing, but I trusted my painters and I had my fan deck even then. And thankfully, you know, the corporations wanted my expertise, whether I was certified in something or not. So I learned it on the job in that way. But I know for Christine and I know for Jan, and I think myself, you know, we had an affinity for it when even when we were younger and didn't realize it. And what I loved about this program that Jan created, because I've sat in on it a few times before now, and um, what it did was it gave me not just the confidence, but it helped me understand why I did what I did. You know, I knew it was right, but I didn't know the why. So it gave me the why behind it. And that does give any stager, decorator, designer, redesigner the confidence or to know what to check when your eye says to you, hmm, not sure about that. And I had clients that I worked with through building new construction homes and then they moved in and then they needed to rehire me to help them uh, order and pick furnishings and bring it all together. And what a, a funny story with that is they got to know me well enough that even when we were building the home, if I would start to go, hmm, and do that, they're like, oh, she's thinking there's something wrong with this, but just wait, she'll figure it out. And that was when my eye would automatically say, mm, this isn't right. And then the education that you have helps you work through what's not right about it. So that's why this is such a wonderful program for anyone who wants to go a little deeper in color, because it gives you the why when you don't always know what the reason is. 
So, uh, you know, if I'm listening to the two of you, you sort of are saying I stumbled into color and somebody gave me an opportunity <laughs> and then I was sort of, da, 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 and it was, what if I'm sitting here going, yeah, I can wing my way through this. You know, because I got to say, when I first started my staging business or my decorating business, I didn't have any training in color. And I figured I had an eye for it and I can wing anything that I can, you know, conceivably think of. Uh, I fake it till I make it until you make a mistake. That's right. That was for me. It was like, I yeah. thought I could choose color. And when that client said, we want you to choose color for the wall because we're changing our floors next year. And I'm like, whoa, I don't think you can do it that way around. You got to choose the floor and right. then choose the paint. Yep. And they said, no, 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 no. We want it. We want to paint like we need to be fresh. So smart old me gets them to go and choose the floor first, even though you can't put it down yet. Let's choose the floor. Then I'll choose the color. And then a year later, when they put the floor down, the color wasn't working. It was a totally different color. So I hadn't considered the direction of the sun, but I also hadn't discovered the undertones of flooring. And, right. you know, the, I, it was devastating to me. I can no longer wing it. I need training. I need training for this. And I need to understand not just the whys, but the science behind everything. So it's like, you know, you can be somebody who has natural talent, but I think having the credibility that somebody has taught you to the science behind it and that you have that sort of uh, certification or that logo that says you know mm -hmm. about it, it's an outward demonstration of knowledge, you know, and I think that even if you're brilliant at choosing color and you haven't made a mistake like I did, I think having that certification on is like a, you know, it's like a rubber stamp on your resume. Um, how else would anybody know? You know, how would we know that you've done a thousand consultations? How would we know that? Right. It's bringing all that knowledge together to share. And, you know, one of the reasons that we're here together is because Jan is planning retirement now. And we're like, oh my God, who's going to teach this program? And we're like, hmm what about Linnell? You know, so it was like, I know I was cutting you off there and I'm sorry, but I was just, if I lose the thought, you know, at the time of age I am now, it's like, I got to continue on. So what were you going to say and tell us why we're choosing you? Well, the only thing I was going to say is you're right. That natural ability only takes you so far. And when you need to problem solve, because someone in their home has warm and cool colors clashing and yes. they're in their fixed elements. If you don't have that education behind you, you don't know how to fix the problems and you don't, it'll only go so far. So that's true. You know, people can wing it for a while, but something's always going to come up. And the other part of being a stager, you know, because this class is for homeowners, it's for decorators, it's for people that want to earn a living doing color consultations. But in staging, you often come across either two things I think about. One is that, you know, a real estate agent, bless their heart, gets in their mind, this is a color that I love, and I'm going to recommend it to everybody. But then, you know, they're surprised that it doesn't work in, in many other situations. And because of what you're saying, you know, the fixed elements are wrecking the whole thing. Um, but also sometimes as a staging professional, you are limited by, let's say, budget or time. You know, the color on the wall is wrong and the floor isn't working and then the furnishings are not working. So if you can solve the problem, right, because you're applying the science that you learn um, by choosing the right accessories and art, then, you know, you're going to be the hero on that job. And like you said, you get the job when they move into the house. They're like, oh my God, right. we better not, you know, we better not make a move without calling in our expert, right? And I, and I think when you use science as your crutch, you, you cannot make a mistake. And, and the other thing that um, is so important, and, and you mentioned it too, is, you know, if, if there is a color that you particularly love or, or don't, 
it is irrelevant. What you have to do is look at what is in front of you and solve that problem. Um, I'm just thinking of how, well, I, one, one consultation in particular where um, I walk in and it's 80s mauve and blue and they're not getting rid of that sofa and they're not getting rid of the recliners, but they want to have a fashionable up-to-date color on their wall for, look. <laughs> yeah, for a new look. And it doesn't matter what you see in the shelter magazines or anything. You just have to look at what is there and not be alarmed <laughs> and figure it out. And one of the things that we do in the, in the color certification course is we decode, I give you a decoding uh, process for that fan deck so that when you walk into the space, you can find that answer quickly because time is money. Um, and you really, when you're doing a color consultation or a staging consultation that includes color, you want to make sure that you've, you've nailed it and you're in and out and on to the next appointment without wasting a lot of time. And so uh, that to me is the, is the secret sauce uh, yeah. that we have oh, oh many secret sauces in, in our color <laughs> certification course um, that, that really makes us different or CSP different and and to me, in my mind, superior, because you talk about the, the thousand consultations and you know to become an expert at anything, it's 10,000 hours. Well, I can tell you it's been more than that to be able to boil everything down into a, a place where you can go in and into a, a, a space and out of it in a matter of an hour and 15, an hour and a half and know without a shadow of a doubt that you have provided the absolute best solution to their space. Irrefutable evidence that you're an expert. Yes. Yep. So Linnell, um, let's talk about you or your expertise in terms of being an instructor and you know, why we're transitioning this through you yes. and you know, what joy you got out of teaching this week. Yes. Well, we go back. In the, we go back in the training um, to 2001 when Christine and I were both training in the staging program, and then I also trained for CSP for a time and loved it. And you guys brought up another point, another reason the science is so important, and another thing this course gives you is the language in how to talk to a homeowner, a real estate agent, anyone, because the answer can never be because I like this color. Right? Yes. Because it makes everything you do subjective. And when you do that, you, you can leave and they're like, well, I like this color better, so that's what I'm doing. Or yeah. I like this placement better, whatever the case may be. So that science really also gives you a language to show them the why. And it isn't, um, it isn't just a personal preference or an opinion. It is based in fact. And that is a big thing to do. Um, now I forgot the rest of what you asked me. Uh, in the transition, we just had class last night and I had a lovely time with the participants. And they really were getting it. You know, they may have had some natural abilities too, but now they were seeing how the science affected the choices. And it also gives you a framework for doing color consultations or working with builders or working with whoever you're working with. Where do you begin? How do you get to the end result? How do you do that in an effective time frame, as Jan just mentioned, doing it in an hour, an hour and 15 minutes? How do you make those right decisions and know what you're doing? So it gives you a process as well, as well as confidence, as well as fun. It gives you a framework to work from. And it was neat to see them jump on and grab hold of that and really enjoy that process. So, I, well, I would like to say one more yeah. thing, weighing in on Linnell and her 
ability as a trainer. Now, of course, I took my original staging course from you, Christine, and which was brilliant. Um, and the way, and not wanting to bother you, <laughs> I ended up so many times calling Linnell and saying, hey, what do I do? Should I buy this red sofa? <laughs> you, you remember that, don't you, Linnell? Yeah, yep. You said, yeah, go for it. Um, anyway, but, but Linnell has just a, a wonderful way of, um, calming a person down who is <laughs> a little, oh gosh, I don't want to make a mistake. Um, and, and then just walking you through what, what we learned. Um, and, and, and she's so calm and has amazing stories, personal stories ex of her experience that she can share with a class that you can't, you can't theorize that. You have to have gone through the muck <laughs> before <laughs> you can finally, you know, say- okay, is in the trenches. In the trenches. Been in the trenches. <laughs> That's right. To be able to fight the war, right? Yeah, you know, yes, it's not- Exactly, that. exactly. It's so- Not armchair well, generaling it. <laughs> Right. So I often wonder, you know, like, so there's obviously there are choices when it comes to taking programs. It's the same right. with staging. It's like you can take it online, but you can take it online with a real person mm -hmm. in a way you can ask right. questions, where you can have that theorizing thumped out and then reformed into a real life experience like we've, you know, we've talked about between the three of us. Um, what would you say then to someone who is wondering how on earth you can learn color online because, you know, the monitors are different or, uh, you know, the lighting in, in the office that they have, you know, we've got three different spaces. We're across the United States and Canada, uh, but we all have different lighting. So maybe you can talk to that a little bit. I'll, I'll start. And then, uh, Linnell, I'd like you to, to pipe in with this. Um, the consistency that we have with this course is that everybody has the same uh, fan deck. And once the fan deck has been decoded and each student then also has a color wheel looking at the science of color, um, we're looking at color in the same, you know, when I, we're, we're looking at it in the same way. Um, and if there is any kind of question about it, that's what's really nice about uh, go to meeting or go to webinar on the platform is that students can ask questions in a live setting and you answer them right then and there. And the, and the other part of this too is that there are a ton of examples, example after example, I mean, to the point where you might think we've overdone it, but it. I just remember when this was trying to sink into this thick head that I needed that reminder, reminder, reminder so that it did sink in because it, it did not come immediately for me at all. I don't know about you, Linnell, but it just was like tint tone shade. Oh, which one's which, when do I use it, how do, so, so even though the color might be different from monitor to monitor, what you're looking at or what the student is looking at is going to be consistent from, you know, throughout the course. So Irrelevant. what would you say to that question, Linnell? Well, you said it there, the reinforcement is a really important part, and you use the word color eye. I recently took another course, too, from an artist who talked about our eyes are muscles, and you need to exercise that color muscle. And the more you exercise, the stronger or more honed or better it gets. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about this program, Yes, the examples are there. The reinforcement is definitely there. 
And the ability to answer those questions in live real time is there. But the other part is we are all holding the same fan deck. So they're sitting at home. So if their monitor varies a little from one to the other, it doesn't matter because they can still tactilely hold it, see it, touch it, and experience it in that way. And in fact, if there's a smaller group as we had last night, I was able to take them uh, off of mute and let them talk. And there was one question they did have about a doorway. And we all weighed in a little bit as to what we were seeing. And really we were ultimately close to the same page. It might've been off a little bit, but it, um, it's there, it's part of the process. And again, you tactilely have it in your hand and that makes all the difference. Plus you have aha moments at different times. You talked about red being your favorite since childhood. Maybe because my hair was redder when I was younger, red was my least favorite. I didn't want to use it on my person or I didn't care about it in decorating. And I've come to love it, but I struggled until, your pro until you writing this, Jan, and taking your program with seeing the undertone of red. Oh. And until you had that aha moment with the tomato red versus the apple or the Bing cherry is the other good one to use, good one. it helped me then see warm red and cool red and really having a basis for that. Because if you, if when I looked at them, they were both just red, yep. <laughs> you know, yep. and to learn to find that undertone is really valuable. So it's there. So I was thinking just sort of in, I know we have to wrap this up, but I was thinking, you know, there's a lot of uh, people today working through Zoom, you know, doing um, not because of COVID, but because of distance, mm -hmm. where I was just thinking of a, of a client yesterday, I was talking with her and she is in California and she's doing a Airbnb job that's located in Orlando so west to east different lights all the rest of the things yes. and it's not just the schematic and laying out of the furniture but it's the buying of all the furniture and you know I did ask her like have you looked at the fixed elements and she's like what's a fixed element and I'm like okay we really yeah. need to have a conversation yeah. around this because you're going to create mood boards mm -hmm. and you know, you're looking at stuff online. How do you know that it's going to work when it gets to where it's going? Right. Right. That's reputation. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's another reason really why, um, regardless of, of what sort of aspect of the business you're working in, even if you were working with builders and renovators, mm -hmm. you have to understand the science of the color in order to make it be outstanding because you're building your reputation. Right. And your job is to guard your client's equity. You know, yes. the money that they're spending on that furniture, in, in the case of your example, you do need to know what you're doing and where it's going and that undertone. Um, because otherwise, you could be wasting a lot of someone's dollars, hard-earned dollars. Yeah. Yeah, amazing. for sure. So wrapping up, ladies, um, tell us a fun thing about color either from your work experience or from the class that you've taught or feedback that people have given you. I mean, I've given you my worst nightmare and what happened for me, but you know, I learned the lesson well, you know, I just, I'm just. Well, I think for me, um, I'll just, I'll just uh, tell you a, a little bit about a friend of mine who um, learned, well, I didn't help. It, I didn't know her to help her with color, but she made a huge mistake. And when we finally met and she understood what I did, she went, oh, now I get why it felt that way. So backing up a little bit, um, living in New England, this is my friend, Mary Jo, she and her husband bought a three-story salt box in Maine, Maine cold Maine. <laughs> uh, so what she wanted to do was she wanted to have a really calm 
master bedroom. So she painted the walls blue and, and she had blue bedding. And it just so happened that those dormers that were, or the, the windows, not dormers, but the windows uh, faced north and east. So one of the things we talk about, and I see Linnell's face, one of the things we talk about is what happens to natural light depending upon the elevation of the natural light source. Though north and east has a very cool undertone as far as the lighting goes. And this is the third floor in Maine in winter where it's just cold anyway. And, you know, they trudge up to the third floor and on top of it being physically cold, it was also visually and emotionally cold. Yes. Because she used a blue, like a, um, almost would be a, um, mm, oh, like not a, a royal, a purpley blue. Oh. Okay. Just because you don't know, you haven't taken the course, so you don't know what I'm talking about. A very cool blue. And so what happened is that, I mean, they could just hardly stand it there because it was- um, It could never get warm. It would <laughs> never get warm and visually, and even, you know, the emotion that they felt in that freezing cold third floor main blue master bedroom, it just did not work. So in addition to the science of color, we also in the course and is, is talk about, especially when you're doing a consultation uh, for people who are dwelling in the space is how is it that they want to feel in that space? What is, what is it that they're going for? Is it fun? Is it warm? Is it, you know, what, what is it? That, right. I'm sorry, what? Relaxation. Relaxation, yeah. whatever it is, um, color can create that in addition to working with the fixed elements. And, the, and you know, I have to say part of these, this whole emotional part of color is, is scientific as well. Um, we know this because the three of us have studied color in a lot more um, genres than, you know, together even more than those 10,000 hours. So that's my story. And, you know, we just don't want to have clients that get to that third floor room in Maine and feel cold there when they're wanting to, you know, feel good and comfortable. Um, and so the end. The end. <laughs> the end. <laughs> What's yours? Well, I have a client who I have worked with through six homes, met them first through a staging consultation. And then they liked so much what, what we did, they invited us to their next home and so on and so forth. And this was another aha moment for me just in the last couple of years. Um, they then moved from Minneapolis to Sedona. So in that case, I flew down help them make color selections and some other work we were doing on the house. And she didn't want it to feel Southwest. So there's red rock and there are pine trees all around. And it's very just easy to go to that Southwest motif. So we chose a color that was not, and they love that home. Well, things have changed and now they've made a move to Tucson. So Tucson is truly the desert, just sand. Mm -hmm. So that is different from Sedona up north down to Tucson. Well, I also made a move in the last couple of years, and it was only three hours away, but I am now in Lake Country. Mm -hmm. And colors that I loved and used regularly in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul, I brought them up here, and they look dirty. And that's because I now live in the county in North America that has the most water. And I honestly think it's that reflection off of all that water. And we've had family come to stay and they say the sky is bluer here. So I... Well, it's it, because you're in the center of the universe. Like, I that's know. Right. I, that's right. What can I tell you? <laughs> but it Always taught me about another that. big 
it taught me another big lesson when working with clients that even on her move from Sedona to Tucson, we did the video through the house. I knew my fixed elements. I knew all the choices I was going to make there. And I still said, we need to pick four colors. We're only going to use two, but we need to pick four. And you still need to check them when you go to Sedona this weekend, uh, when you go to Tucson this weekend to make sure they're right, because light has such a big, plays such a big factor yeah. in that decision. And she then, Wendy said to her husband, Brian, she said, do you want to check these colors? And he said, no, I love every color that Nell's ever done in any of our homes. You just check it when you get there and have the painter start. And they love it. And they're happy in the next home. And I can't wait to go visit them. There you go. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure getting together with you again. And Jan, we wish you well in your retirement. Thank you. We will be coming out to see you sometime in Yay. the real life world once we get flying again. I'm yep. getting my nerve back up. And Linnell, <laughs> we wish you well in, you know, the future classes that you're going to teach. I'm sure it's all going to be amazing. And I think my sort of aha as we've been talking is, you know, it's way beyond the application for, for the certification is way beyond just doing color consults um, or mm -hmm. recommending a paint. It's really all of the aspects of any work that you want to do with interiors or exteriors uh, in whatever genre that you want to be doing that, right? Okay. Whether that's going to be online via Zoom, on a Zoom, on a e-board or uh, in person, right? It's, okay. it's all part of the essence of, of professionalism and expertise and building out your business so that you become known as that the expert, the go-to expert, as it were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thank you both for sharing your wisdom and your experience. And uh, definitely know that of all the classes that you've taught, Jan, there have never been anybody ever say, well, that was a waste of money, or I didn't enjoy that course. Mm -hmm. um, there was no way anybody has ever, it's just glowing, glowing, glowing testimonials. And we know that um, that's going to follow for Linnell. Oh, so it appreciate will. You both being, you know, part of the CSP family and the Academy. And uh, we'll see you soon in your next class, Linnell. And uh, yes. we look forward to hearing about your adventures uh, in the world of retirement, <laughs> whatever that's going to be like, you know, it's just a figment of my imagination yeah. right now, you know, but so thank you, ladies. Well, thank you. Thank you, Christine, for the opportunity and the confidence that you had in me to start this those many years ago. Um, I'm just for, forever grateful and I'm going to get all the clamped here um, because it's just been such a joy. You are an incredible leader, an incredible visionary. Um, I just, I can't believe what you've done and where you have taken CSP since the beginning. It's just been incredible to watch, to watch you do what you do so best. Oh, so well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you both. All right.